All right, so one of the defining features of this Goldwing Tour is the DCT, the automatic transmission. So I thought I'd go into a little bit more detail on that today, give you a bit of a demo of it, because plenty of people haven't ridden DCT, nor any automatic motorcycle, and it's, uh, yeah, it's quite different. So first up, we'll go through all the buttons and controls, because again, those are very different to what you'd normally get on a bike, and then I'll demo each mode and show you how they work. So on your right hand grip here, you've got the starter and it's just a one touch starter. The generator and the starter motor are combined on this bike. So it starts up really quickly and there's no need to hold in the clutch like you might on a Triumph or anything like that because there is no clutch. Um, yeah, it's just one press and it starts up. You've got drive and neutral here. So obviously when it starts up, it's in neutral. And then when you hit drive, you just twist the throttle and go. This A slash M button here, that's automatic or manual. So automatic being like it selects the gears for you. Manual goes into Tiptronic mode where you manually select the gears, although there's still no clutch or anything like that. It's a little bit like the paddles on a steering wheel of a car. Round the back of this switch gear, you've got the mode button, which puts it into a different riding mode. That affects not only the throttle by wire, the ride, so the damping of the suspension and the braking. It's got a combined braking system, so it sends different amounts of braking to the front and rear and it will vary it by riding mode so sharper when it's in sports mode for example it also varies the dct and the way that that reacts so i'll give you a demo in a bit but basically it hangs on to the gears in sports mode so you get the revs up and you get up towards that peak power at sort of um i think it's four and a half for peak torque and then five or so for uh peak power six thousand is where it redlines so that's the right control neutral drive automatic or manual and the mode button. I mean, you've got cruise control on, on there as well, which is great. Now, of course, as I've said, no clutch lever, which takes a little getting used to. No um, gear shifter, of course, either. But you do have these plus and minus buttons. The thumb button is the minus, and then the plus is like a trigger on the back there. Those are for the Tiptronic sort of manual mode. So you'll press that one to go up and then that one to go down a gear. I haven't used that a great deal because, to be honest, the whole appeal of this bike is just sticking it in manual and, you know, ride it and forget about the gears. I have heard, though, in the comments and the mechanic who dropped this bike off with me, he also said that if you feel like it's a little bit, I don't know, jerky in, in sort of slow manoeuvring scenarios, then putting it in manual can help a little bit. Also, if you put it in rain mode, econ, rain mode, you know, that's going to make the power delivery a bit smoother as well so you could potentially put it in rain and manual and i assume that's going to give you the smoothest ride especially when you've got pillions you know that's a nice thing to uh, to have available to you the other button on this side as well is the walking mode so if it's in neutral this is for low speed maneuvers it's a really heavy bike 380 kilograms so it's quite hard to push especially uphill so you can stick it in walking mode by pressing this button and then you use the tiptronic buttons to move it backwards and forwards. I'll demo that first because I'm parked up here anyway, so I can just go forward and back a bit. So as I said, we're in neutral, hold on to the brake lever, hit the walking mode button. And then if you just want to walk it forward, press this trigger on the back, release the brake, and it will just gradually move you forward at like one mile an hour and you can just waddle your legs. The way it does this is with the DCT. So previous gold wings, well, I think the manual one does this as well. It uses the starter or an electric motor. I'm not sure, but this definitely uses the two clutches. So DCT has the one, three, five, and seven gears on one set of gears, and then the even gears, two, four, and six on the other set of gears. And it pre-selects the gear that it thinks you want next based on whether you're accelerating or decelerating, and then uses the two clutches to move seamlessly between those two sets of gears. Now, when it's in walking mode, I think clutch one takes you forward, so you can hear it feathering the clutch and revving the engine. And then if you hit the minus button, I think it's clutch two that sends you backwards. So there's no like gear selecting or anything like that. You can pretty much instantaneously go forward and then hit back and it just goes straight back. It's such a useful feature, especially if you have a garage that's, you know, if there's a steep camber on the road and then a camber back up the pavement, that's what I have. It's really difficult to push this bike on a, on a surface like that, especially if it's uneven. So getting on the bike, you can get both feet down quite easily. It's not a particularly tall bike. 
and then uh, using that reverse mode to back it in is super, super handy. So you can see it's in walking mode because there's a little icon there, hit neutral and then back into drive. That's the only thing. If you are like stuck in traffic and you're maneuvering around some parked cars or, or kind of static heavy traffic, occasionally I've got too close to someone in front and wanted to maybe filter through, I've had it in drive, put it in neutral, pull the brake, put it in walking mode, backed up a little bit, and then maybe, you know, use the walking forward mode to squeeze between two cars like that. Then you've got to remember to hit neutral and drive before you can set off again in normal automatic mode. But honestly, at first I was getting a little bit like in a muddle with all these controls when I first got on the bike. But then it becomes second nature to, when you're in drive, hit neutral, then walk in whilst you've got the brake lever held and it's pretty quick. Same as like neutral, then drive, it takes but a second. You've just got to remember the sequence. So it's in drive and it's in tour, which is the like regular riding mode. Literally all you do to set off is just twist the throttle and it, you know, pulls away super smooth. I'm hoping you can hear that a bit because it's just so silky smooth. Like you don't get any lurching forward and backwards when it changes gear. So you do hear a little knock as it pre-selects the gear. So if you're I mean, it's barely audible, but that's the kind of crudest thing about DCT, and that's not saying much. So while you're on the move, you can hit mode, put it into sport. And all of a sudden, you can feel it becomes pretty lively. And you can hear that it's revving higher as well. Like I said, it holds onto the gears and gets you into that mid-range in the revs where you get a bit more power out of it. Firmer braking and a firmer ride as well. And also you don't really have as much travel in the throttle. Smaller adjustments to the throttle make a bigger difference to the output, you know? Into Econ mode, that's the most fuel efficient mode, I guess. And immediately you can feel it's in a lower gear. You know, it's in four fifth at 25 miles an hour. This is seven speed, by the way, the DCT version. The manual version is six speed. And then rain, so I'll just select that. I mean, you can pretty much open the throttle and it doesn't really. Now, that is something that people say is quite difficult, U-turns on the DCT. You've just got to drag the rear brake a bit and get used to the weight of the bike. That wasn't a particularly tight one because I had a bit of space because it was a roundabout, but the surface wasn't great. But yeah, that's taken a bit of practice. So that's uh, the different riding modes. Now I'll just show you putting it into manual. So you've got a D there, a D symbol. That's for the DCT. Press that and it's gone. And then I can just use the buttons on this side. So it's in third. Just press the trigger. I mean, you can barely feel that it's changing gear. It's just so smooth. I must agree with the commenters and, uh, and the guy who dropped it with me. It is smoother in this mode. I guess because it's not trying to anticipate what you're going to do next. Uh, you know, it's not trying to pre-select the gears. I mean, of course, it's not as smooth on and off the throttle as if you can feather it uh, on the clutch, but it's still pretty good. I believe the, the kind of earlier versions of DCT were a bit cruder than this because they've been at it for like 10 years or something. Um, but this is pretty good. I'd almost like to ride one that was a bit less refined just for comparison. Now the DCT will intervene if I think, certainly if the revs get too low, I'm not sure if you keep it in first if it will shift up to second, you know, despite having it in manual mode. If this Volvo would move then I'd be able to find out. I mean, maybe if I took it all the way to the red line, it would. Nice, nah, holding on to it. So I'm in fourth, going around this roundabout, and then it's gone down to second, even though it's in manual mode. Down into first. 
but again it won't shift up so it'll just shift down to stop the engine stalling and like I say maybe it will uh, shift up if you rev the you know rev the hell out of it but yeah it's all pretty smart isn't it yeah so you can still use the the buttons the plus and minus buttons to change gear whilst you're in DCT mode it's just that it'll take over straight away once you've finished messing around with it and if it feels like you're in the wrong gear it'll correct it as soon as possible so that's it for a bit of an overview of DCT it's a cracking system it makes total sense to me on a touring bike like the Goldwing I'm not sure about the Africa Twin I'm just about to take this bike back and pick an Africa Twin up and the one that I've got the press bike I've got doesn't have uh, yeah it doesn't have the DCT and I'm probably glad of that to be honest I mean if you want to off-road it then you need to be on the clutch a bit don't you so riding it on the throttle like the DCT does I'm not sure about that definitely go check it out if you get chance I'm sure the dealers will be more than happy to send you out on one if you're a bit uh, intimidated by the size of the Goldwing I think the NC range which is like a great sort of commuter twin fairly affordable there's a DCT version of that so that's probably a great bike to, to sample it on I'm not sure it'll have all the bells and whistles like this walking mode for example um, but yeah it still give you a good feel for it let me know if you've got any questions about DCT in the comments below and if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this hit subscribe and I'll see you next time